The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi, everyone. It's Basil Chapman. On this Tuesday, 24th of October, we're looking at the E-mini of 24. Here's the one-minute chart. Look at this. Uh, stuck in this rectangle formation, <clears throat> up and down, just below the 200-period moving average. Look at the 200-period moving average, the orange line, the 10-minute chart, how it became a support level, a magnet and support level. Is it going to become a magnet again? Look at this, you've got your sandwich uh, <clears throat> right here. I always look at these. Look at this big green bar, there's a 10 minute bar, right at about uh, 9.30 or so. Big red bar, big green bar. Another pretty big red bar. It goes green, red, green, red. And we're gonna see how it results. But very often what this does is it, it identifies the outside lines. In other words, 42.74, as the resistance and 4258, which is the well, now it's 4259 because it's a slightly rising 200 period moving average. We're going to be watching this very closely. All right, let's get to our story. I want to go straight to something that's really important. Look at this we've got um, the TLT bumping up against the pink nine period exponential moving average. And I said, due, the, due to the analysis that I did um, last week, that I was looking at. The support levels between 88 and 87 for the um, for the TLT, and we're trading right now at 84. So we've gone under that, and uh, there's a ton of 87s all the way through 2009, 2011 before the big takeoff. So that uh, uh, yields drop, 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 dropped for uh, it was it about 10, 11 years. Um, then we went to zero. My, my, ever since I came to TFN, I've been talking about actually even before then, I was talking about the Japanization of U.S. bond yields, that we too will go to zero. That was my theme for a long time. And about two years ago, I said, you know what? I think we've made some kind of a low. I'm getting that. That is done. The, that whole Japanization of our bond yields is finished. Now we're going to be looking at the chance that we could start to move slightly higher in yields. That's an important component of looking at the market itself. But what I did want to just show you here is, look, here's the T-bonds. 109 and 830 seconds was the low in August of 2013. Now, this is a continuous contract. So that now the low is 109 uh, and 730 seconds. Did I write it incorrectly? Maybe that's what I should have written, 730 seconds. And we're trading right now at 109 and 24, 30 seconds after going a little bit lower. And there's a monthly chart. In October, we went down to 107 and 4, 30 seconds. So we are in an area that should give us some chance of some upside uh, action, maybe an arch, another arch formation. In the long term, our yields going to continue higher. That's what everything looks like, but I would rather go one step at a time and say if we can't even bounce to the 100, 113 to 116 with the pink and nine period moving averages in the um, weekly chart, eh, that's a problem. Now, I just wanted to show you this. Look, GE. Ah, GE just took a huge hit from 118, actually 117 down to 105. I say a huge hit because it hasn't, it's just been a fantastic winner up until it stalled. And you remember in June, I think it was June, I said, uh oh, yeah, just under 120. It was 117.96. That was July. So, July, um, there should be some kind of a sideways action. And then we're going to see what happens because the nine period exponential moving average was still extremely strong. And because of that, it would take time for that peak that was made. And you can see, look at this right here, on balance volume made some kind of a high and then went sideways. So all that, that momentum was stalling. So we pulled back, we went underneath the 14 and nine period moving averages in price, but they didn't turn pink. 
is still green. And then you got news today of whatever the earnings is, the market loves it. It's up 5.7%, up 6 at 112.89. So that's G. Look at Triple M. Triple M we've been talking about for a while, saying, wow, something's not right there. And then it popped out of the rectangle. And what I'd said in this particular pattern, just like with the dollar, you've got to hold above the left side high. In this case, it was the high right there, the cluster formation back in March of this year. Uh, at about 112, 30. You got to hold above that high for two out of three weeks, preferably consecutive weeks, where we went popped up once and then we failed and we came down. We took out the rectangle low, and now there's a really nice pop to the upside. Can it hold? I don't know, but I, I want you to point something out, which is really important. Look at Verizon. Verizon, oh, what a chart. I mean, you know, I, I had drawn in. Let me see if I can get this again right there. So I had drawn this in as a down channel, a little mini down channel. And I didn't actually extend it. I'm going to do that right now. I'll just say extend to the right and extend to the right. So what do we have? We have a Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. And I'm going to extend that to the right. Okay, make that green. That's what I always do, make that green. Make that pink. I use pink because pink, I have red as well. I don't want too many things of the same color. So it's slightly different pink. You can see it. Uh, it's a slight change you can see in uh, Tiger YouTube. So now look what's happened. We've popped above this trend line. So it was in a, a, a decisive a down channel. It went to the upper end. You know, we like to talk about how Bud Rolfs used to talk about the, the, the price moves from one side to the other and how it holds on the other side, whether it's on the way down or up, is really important. And look, it kept getting repelled by this technique that I developed years ago called the inside track repellent zone. This is a propellant zone. That's a repellent zone. And now for the first time, we're out of it. That doesn't mean a thing. It's a weekly chart. It doesn't mean a thing. I would like at least two or three bars out day. That's weeks. And preferably consecutive. I'd rather not have it have a gap in between one week where it doesn't do it. Out of three weeks, I want two of the weeks to be closing decisively above the black 14-period moving average, which is at about 33.22. Uh, now, how does this impact telephone? Telephone also has that big pop-up, but now it's giving some of it back. Um, it's at 15.40. It's up 45 cents today. That's not bad. Had a big pop. There's a weekly chart last week. Mm -hmm. Holding okay. So the XLC, this is the communications ETF. I don't know how it did so well because I think T-Mobile, there are a couple of stocks in it. And I've also been taking note of some of the communication stocks, more, more likely in the uh, IWM Russell 2000 that have been doing well. So this is holding very nicely. It's making a cup formation. And we'll see if, it's, if it has a test on the right side with technicals weakening or technicals strengthening. So the XLC is the uh, S, uh, this is the XLC Weekly Arca Comics oh, oh, Communication Service Select. Yeah, it's a spider uh, a spider fund. So it's holding very nicely. All right, and that's a big help that you finally got a, a, tank, a telephone tease the symbol popping and rising. I'll be back. We we'll go through the different uh, stocks, but look at RTX. Also, a lousy action, a big one to death. That's um, great to have. Up four and a half. I'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, let me just do this here. I'm back. A week to rise this month. Oh, you're absolutely correct. That was a mistake. Thank you for correcting it. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Chapman Wave is there always. Correcting me if I make a mistake. It's good. That's the way it should be. B. There it is. Uh, yeah. So uh, we're just uh, in the den was mentioned Nordic American tanker. So this is part of the oil. If I look at some of the other shippers, they they're not doing as well. So um, this is trading up 11 cents at 4.26. Uh, this is I'm calling this a leg C in the daily because all the technicals are still pretty good. It could be an alternate count. Uh, if you know, it could it has to be a C. So that's very good. That means it should try for the left side high. We just saw a big failure pattern from the 430 level. It was 432. I think up 432. So 432 dropped down to 360s. I mean, that's that's a big percentage drop. All right, the question came in. Let me just do this right now because a chart was shown. Um, let me just get this to the right place. Even more similar. I'm going to go. Oh, there it is. So here's a chart. I wonder if I can just. I'm going to drag this chart. Oh, I've never done this. Here's this chart. I think you can see it. It's a black uh, background chart. That's always a little difficult to see, but you can see the nice yellow rings. And the question is, is the S and P? And now I can't tell whether this is a weekly. I should know it visually. A, a weekly. So what he said. Uh, is this a match where you've got? Do you see this? extension to the right and the pullback holding a trend line a diagonal trend line support i'll be looking at the potential for another move up now this move does give you a measured move but what i like to do in a situation like that it just says this would be the projection if everything worked out perfectly but we know that things don't always work perfectly in the market i mean sometimes it does sometimes it is by mistake Sometimes it's just uh, you, you can't believe your eyes because it's just following the trajectory that you had typed up. All I can say is let me look at this right now, and I'm just going to ask you because I don't want to take too much time. I'm going to ask you right here, uh, you, maybe if you can just type in uh, whether that was a, a daily or a weekly. Now, I'm going to go to this S. I should recognize it, but I'm just going to go to the chart right now, to the S&P. 
Um, yeah, I guess that's the weekly chart. Yep, it's the weekly. Oh, you also said this weekly. Right, we're on the same page. And basically what we're looking at is a trend line that I could draw from here to here. And because I, I go to the tops of the, the wicks. But if there's a body that looks to me as a visual, remember, I'm very visual, much more so than mathematical or anything else. Now, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, that is my trend line support. I'm actually going to make it lower right now because I first want to be conservative. And that's the way I look at that. Then I have a pattern that I could call the falling axe formation. And I would be like this. But at the same time, it turns out, let me do this. It turns out that using this trend line, it's an exact fit. So remember, I like... I like trend lines to be, if you're going to make a channel, a channel by the very definition of a channel has parallel lines, two parallel lines up, two parallel lines down. My Chapman Wave inside track is a little mini channel. It's still a channel, narrow, narrow, narrow. So uh, Dan wants to know if it breaks to the upside. So now these are all ifs. This is not it is doing, it is if it does. We don't know. What you would expect, and I'm anticipating this is a leg C, that's an A minus, that's an A minus because it took out the left side low. So you go edit, put it in an A minus right there. And this is now trough C, lowercase on the way down. So I don't want to get into the if this and if that. For instance, at this particular point, I couldn't give a hoot about what it can do on the upside. Because the very these two trend lines, uh, sorry, these two moving averages, the pink nine period moving average of 4320, and the black 14 period moving average, and the reason why it's pink is because it's under the 14 of 43. I think it's 37. I'm just let me double check that. I want to give you the right numbers, otherwise, what's the point of this whole exercise? 4337. So. Um, that's going to be very, so 4320 to 4337 should be extremely strong resistance. So we can't even talk about breaking into the 4400s until we can actually touch that level right there. So I think that might take a little time. I'm not sure. It might happen very quickly. It could happen later. But that would be the first thing. Now, what would we, what would we need? We would need for the doji candle of yesterday... We're getting a rise, a, a, a price movement right now above the wick high. That means this whole candle, this red candle of what are we in today's Tuesday, on Friday, with the 200 period moving average in the daily chart of 42.73. If that gets taken out, then you've still got the pink nine period moving average at 42.94 and the black 40 and at 42.84. And the black 14 moving average of 4296 to take out. That's a lot of ifs. All right. I I had a I spent a lot of time last night and early this morning saying, you know, you are short. You got that perfect short on Friday uh, at the open where the market gave you a little pop so that you could get out of the UDOW three times long and take a profit and switch to the SDOW. The short position where I said to buy underneath the price that it was at when I sent out my opening call newsletter at about 8 o'clock. Um, and um, we managed to get that. So we've taken some gains. We, 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 I wouldn't say we guaranteed a gain because I've raised the, the stop in this long short position. But at the same time, I had to think really hard. Do I want to get out of that and switch on the early morning a uh, bit of a bounce in the market and switch back to the long side. But the tide says to me at this particular point that we could get a pop and we could make another arch formation in the S&P, but you've got so much resistance coming up that unless this afternoon, so I just went through uh, what we were looking at and I mentioned, but look, Coca-Cola. Horrible chart. I mean, just yeah, it is in the 65s uh, just a couple of months ago. Whoosh, down to the 51s, had a nice bounce to 54, 
and then popped up to $1.62 today on the earnings announcement. These are all good signs. The fact that finally I'm getting this, the weakest of the weak, especially the weakest of the weak Dow stocks, having at least earnings reports that say, you know what, we're kind of building a cushion. And one by one, I'm starting to see the factors that I need for the move to the upside. And if it's a move to the upside, it's going to be a move that will be sustained if each one of these levels that I'm looking at as resistance gets taken out. So it's a step by step by step move. Um, and the only other one was Visa. Visa's also up almost four dollars at 235. Doesn't look too great, but look, it's holding that beautiful up uh, champ inside uh, inside track propellant zone. So the answer to the question is, uh, do I think that that could be the uh, trajectory for the s and P? I'll give an answer when we get back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. So let me get back to that S&P question because I think it's a question that not just me, but uh, not just uh, Dan, but I think a lot of people would like to know the answer to. And of course, we don't know the answer, but I can tell you what I'd be looking for. You see the way the nine period exponential moving average in the weekly chart of the S&P. I'll just do this for you. Let's get out of that. We can go to S&P. Oh, that's, yep, that's the, okay, there we are. So you can see the way that this 120 minute chart, this is, I'll start off on the very short term. 
You see this V-shaped pattern, and then it failed, and then the price came down, but the on-balance volume went to a lower low, and now you're having a nice bounce. So that's the first step, just to say, these are things that I was looking for, and, and we have time. I mean, even if the Dow closes up 425.3 today, it doesn't matter because um, if I'm going to go to a buy signal from here, um, I'm looking out kind of three to, to six sessions, meaning could stretch into a second week going to uh, into November. So now look at the S&P on the weekly basis. This is a daily basis. You've got pink nine-period moving average. You've got this M-shaped pattern. This is just three things. This is the price of the S&P current price on a daily chart. Mm -hmm. This is the nine-period moving average. Look when it turned pink. Look when it went green just for a couple of days. And look when it went back to pink. Now, when it does this choppy, 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 I'm always very suspicious because on the second one, after I I, I use the E mini all the time. I mean, if I'm I'm in front of a computer, that E mini I'm notating from a one minute, five minute, ten minute chart. I remember Larry once saying, "I don't think there's anyone who 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 notates as many charts as I do." Uh, Larry, I think you are novice when it comes to 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 notating. I'm not a novice in terms of being the champ in terms of. Uh, your, your positions and your trading. I'm just talking about notating every single thing. There's, uh, when I spoke to someone at Trade Station the other day and said, uh, whatever you're going to do, I don't want to lose any of my charts. I've got thousands of charts in all time frames notated by hand. So um, look, when I get to this particular point here, and the, the reason why I was talking about the notation is, in the notation, you see we went to a G, it's unusual to go to G. There was a Chapman Week possible instant restart in the weekly chart. But when you do the measured move from this G to this A, which is gray A because the, the stochastic was very weak, look at these two lines. Look how strong the price was. This is a weekly chart. Look how weak the technicals were here. But look how long it took for the nine period exponential moving average to turn pink. But it hasn't widened a lot. Yeah, it's gone pink, but it's really, it's not wide. If it was wide, I'd say um, there's no chance of returning up for a while. But because it's narrow, it says it could be lower highs and lower lows consecutively. And we could go down a little bit more before we have a bigger move. If we start to get down to the 4,000 level, we're at 42.53. I'm giving ifs because this is what it's all about. If, if it goes down to the 40 below this key support of the doji candle with the Chapman Wave instant restart of 4103. Take that out on a weekly closing basis. I have to tell you that I have no choice but to say that 3896 level of the 200 period moving average, getting close, we don't have to hit it, but getting close to that meaning 4,000 is, is a viable option. Now, let's look at what's going on here. Let me just show you something because I like to put apples to apples. So looking at chart patterns, you remember the Dow for the, we got the exact August 1st high based on um, on the on-balance volume plus a couple of other things. And that was right there, right there. Everything looked great, right? Except I had my one indicator. And when it bounced, it made lower highs and then lower lows. And then it took all the way about 11 or 12 sessions before it turned pink. And then there was a brief green and pink, 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 a brief green and pink, pink, pink. And that's just saying to me that the upside momentum at this particular point, I don't see it strong enough yet for me to get a sustained green, meaning this is the daily chart of the down. Now let's go to the S&P because what I wanted to show you is, whoops, I'm not the S&P. I wanted to go to the dollar. Look at this. The dollar, early this morning, I know most of you would not have seen it. In fact, I don't think anybody else would have seen it. But it was pink. So that was your high. And you remember I said in any other circumstance, I would have called the dollar high matching the same thing that I saw on the on the Dow on August the 1st. I would have said that this high of the 3rd of October at 107.35 is a high that's going to take a week or two or maybe even three before you get a pink nine period moving average 
And at that point, I think that the dollar starts to become vulnerable. But as long as it's green, that's going to be positive. Well, it hit the Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone this morning, and it's bounced not bad. It's bounced 53 ticks at 106.15. The weekly chart shows absolutely no sign whatsoever of succumbing to selling. The 9, nine is way above the 14. The price is way above the 9. The 200-period um, moving average was a fantastic bounce-off level. The MACD is still positive. Stochastic's at 87%. If I go to the UUP, because you want to see volume, UUP says... On balance volume isn't even close as, as overbought as it was back in uh, in 2000, 2022 when it went to the UUP went to the 31 uh, did it hit 31 or no, 30.76 level and you saw the on balance volume gave the exact high and then it turned down so all I can say is at this particular point I still see the dollar as a viable entity. It did not make the cup formation here. It did the January falling axe formation and then broke to the upside. But this can be extended to the side and just saying um, we're fighting now between the arch formation. Why am I mentioning the dollar? Because the dollar is a key ingredient. When that dollar does break, I think it will allow some of the multinationals in the S&P to really help. So as it stands right now, let me go back to the dollar itself. The dollar, yeah, we have the dollar index. Um, weekly chart pulling back. Oh, I'm saying, wait a minute, that doesn't look that like that. No, it wasn't. It was the Dow the, it, it, pulling back, but holding very nicely. Now look at the S and P. For those of you who like to use the spy, I'll go to the spy right now. So here's the spy. It made a G slash C. Pull back quite sharply. Um, this had a different pattern to the actual index. This is very unusual. Look at the middle chart. That's the weekly. Keep looking. Keep looking. Slightly different chart. Pulling back also at a G. So I'm saying that there's a lot of work to be done. But when it finally breaks, and so, the, so the, let me just do this. The short answer is not yet until you start to see the S&P trading for about two out of three weeks above the 44.10 level. And here we are at 42.55. That's a big ask because you had a question that had a really a one, an A to B or C to D. That's the lightning bolt pattern that we look at here in the Tiger Financial News Network. But I think what I'm looking at now is that I'm finally seeing a lot of evidence that there are better things because the weak stocks like GE are starting to come back. Again. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, so just in summary, uh, the dollar DXY, uh, I don't know if it hold the gains, but it's doing very nicely right now. The ninth big move, again, it's not flipped. This is the dreaded H, and it did take out the left side low today. Uh, where it closes is important because it has two days, maybe three, to close above that left side low. And so far, it's well above it. That's important. But the MACD's week, stochastics week at 32%. The nine period move, oops, as we speak, in the nine period moving average just popped S. So I'm watching this very closely because if I do start to see, and it could be, it could be the daily, uh, of the dollar starts to pull back and the weekly still holds. Now, the fact that it's gone to a leg to a peak B, um, only because the stochastic said 87% of the MACD is good and the nine's way over the 14, do I say, to me, that is still very positive. If you look at the EUR, USD, here we go, euro dollar currency pair, look, it repelled at the 14 period moving average in the weekly chart, peak A, peak B, leg C in the daily, um, not a bad daily looking chart. But that 200 period moving average at 1.07 is going to be a big challenge. It's at 1.059 right now. I'll just type this in. And the stochastics is 73%. So I don't really have, even though it's in leg C, I don't have a confirmation of a buy mode. I have a buy signal, but not a buy mode. So we'll see if that's going to hold. I am going to put the up arrow in because everything else has been good so far. Um, and if you look at the USD JPY, look at this. Here's the JV1. Um, stalled at that high. Um, this is a peak D in the weekly chart with four candles just stuck in a tiny little range. US dollar, Japanese yen. Remember my rule of thumb? I've given workshops on this. So in my, if you if you're a member of the uh, so a subscriber to my opening call, you can go to them. And I discuss this narrow rectangle and the large rectangle that forms a lopsided gravy cup, meaning it has a cup formation, a little lopsided. And it can go, if it makes higher highs and higher lows, from that flagpole on the way down, it can go peak A, peak B, peak C, and even a D, just under, right on, or just above the previous high. And then you've got to be careful for a pullback. So this is still holding. It's not, it's not acting great. It's just holding. It's a high-level consolidation. How it treats the 148 level, it's at 100. 49.88 right now. I'd say how it treats 148 the support on any pullbacks and it'll be very important. So far, it's just holding well. All the technicals are, um, are kind of mixed. The stochastic's good at 86%. The MACD's weak. The um, 9 is over the 14. So that's that. If you're looking at, um, let me, I just let me finish these while I can. Crude oil, sharp pullback. Now, this pullback is really quite important. Why? Because for some reason, um, uh, CCJ, this is the uranium, but has gone to a leg D, but a, a very small peak A, peak B, peak C, and a higher leg D with a, no peak yet, um, as a high-level consolidation, if you're looking at the weekly chart, um, and 
let me just do this because you you use the other one. We look at one, two, three, four. This is uranium. <clears throat> this is energy fuels Inc. Hasn't got such a good pattern. It has a, a nice a bit of a bounce to leg B. But the one we have, which is UEC, which is the one that I said, it's just the best looking chart out of all of the uraniums. Um, went to a new recovery high today. We're in at the 360s, uh, taking a little bit off. It hit 577, pulled back to 450. And here it is at 572, up 11 cents. And what I had said was that let's see if oil pulls back, will the alternate fuels, the energy uh, sector, will uranium do be able to hold its own or will it pull back? We'll see soon enough. But uh, so far, this is actually really nice. See, there's a leg E in the weekly chart. Next question came in. Uh, there's a question, how's the you, 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 you doing with the... Yeah, so I just answered that. Another question came in. Where was it? Um, so I think tomorrow, is it tomorrow TNX? Uh, T, TXN, TNX. This is um, TNX. This is Texas Instruments. Remember, that's all we used to talk about back in the 1980s and 90s, Texas Instruments. Um, and it's kind of been off the radar since then. What am I? TNX. T TNX? TXN? Oh, of course, TXN, Texan. Uh, look at this. Up $1.11 at 147.43. Is it going to pull one of those things that we just saw with GE, et cetera? When does Texas Instruments come out? Is that today after the bell? Or is that today? Uh, I can't find it right now offhand. It's either today or tomorrow. But that's going to be very important. Why? Because you've got Intel and Texas Instruments in the uh, semiconductor area that have kind of been lagging for a long time. Then, then Intel had a very, very nice rally. And now it's holding the 200 period. Oh, and thank you. Yeah, good comments there. That uh, GE... And what's the other one I was talking about a moment ago? Oh, and Triple M, are oh, real companies. Yes, correct. I, I can't disagree with that at all. Let me just see if that was a statement. Yeah, G, another company with real earnings. Oh, Dell. Yeah, and remember, GE got reconfigured completely with a new um, CEO, and he's done a really good job. And Dell got taken off the market and put back on the market by Alexander Graham Dell. No, what was his name? Michael Dell. Um, anyway, uh, Dell, D not D-E-D-E-L-L. -L. So, yeah, and Dell's holding pretty well. There's another one that was looking very poor, and then for some reason holds the 200 period moving average, and since March has gone from 40 to 66. It hit 72. Very nice action, just these individual companies. So I, I'm actually liking a lot what I see. I'm not complaining at all. Um, and I'm pretty sure if I'm wrong, we're going to be taken out with a nice profit in our short position. And I'll have to consider over the next, because when Google comes out today, uh, Goog, when Google comes out, Alphabet, when it comes out, um, they should have everything going for them. This is the Chabray Falling Axe Formation. And if it's a good sign, then we're going to see the TL, the um, the QQQs and probably the XLK, the S&P Spider Fund, are doing very nicely tomorrow. So this is going to be quite important. And I say to myself, you know, these these stocks have held so well, like a Google, even Apple, those pull back. I mean, when you think about the others, these are still in the sweet spot. So let's just see what happens. I think Google, if they have good earnings, uh, they're going to be looking at 144. They're at 140 right now. At least 152 was the all-time high. Good action. If it's very poor, watch 134 support. The other one is um, Microsoft. I love Microsoft. We just haven't got back in. Or got in. I've been wanting to for subscribers just as a long-term buy and hold. But at this particular point, I wouldn't be surprised if Microsoft has a little bit of a disappointment for some reason. Not that all oh, the action isn't great. But they say something, they often do that. So I'm watching this very closely because if Microsoft can start to if it can start to pull back, maybe make a lower low in this recent series of lows, 
maybe uh, I don't know if it used to go to 308, but if it could even pull back to 320, I'd like to consider it as something. Back. I'll be back for the final segment. Bows the captain. Thank you, Tiff. Bows now. 326. Very nice action. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hey folks, the last segment, I just want to say this before I go to our call to Earl and Seminole. Uh, the Bitcoin is up 3,000 at 34,530. It gave really good signals. I was very late in getting to the story here, um, even though I saw a nice candle yesterday. But that GBTC was the clue as well. Uh, GBTC, which we've owned before, it's doing fabulously. It's at 26.54, up a dollar 84. And as I said about three weeks ago, I said, I think Bitcoin's coming back into, in, in, into play. Oh, what can I do for you? I'd like to have you give me a target on LM, uh, Lockheed Martin, LMT. Okay, I don't have it notated. I always have had it notated. I just lost the notation. I, I won't be able to put it back. It's whole, it's at four, up 47 cents at 446.63. i tell you what I'm looking at here. I think that this is the Raytheon and uh, General Dynamics. They all had big pops, and now they've kind of sold. They almost look like gold, as if it was this uh, Middle East thing that you've got to get in. And now they're kind of saying, well, what's next? So I'm just going to say to you, um, it has to close. The 200 period moving average is right on it right now, but it has to close. I would say, doesn't, I usually say two out of three weeks. It just needs to close at least one week 
strongly above uh, 457.67. So it's about nine points. If it does that, then it's in a different category altogether. Right now, it's in a consolidation category after a big spike up. It's hugging the 200 period moving average. It could probably stay here a little while. I'll do a little bit more work on it uh, over the day. And tomorrow I'll come back and I'll put it down here for Wednesday. Discuss uh, LMT. It's the symbol Lockheed Martin. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it here, but it might just stall before it gets another burst of the upside. So if you're long, keep long. But um, let's do it again tomorrow. Okay? Thanks, thanks Basil. Thank you. So, folks, uh, Dow's at 304. Watch to see if the Dow gives back and it's only up 110 by after 3 o'clock, then it's pulling back um, and it's ignoring all these good news 